Okay, so reading and understanding a text file. Um, that's the first thing, first objective for today. The second is going to be how to display things in table format. Okay, and I have a couple examples on the screen here. You hopefully you remember that that's using the printf, and then you have to tell it what format you want. So quotation marks, percent, you tell it how many characters you want it to take and the type of information that is coming. So an S is for text, okay? A D is for a digit, so integer values, okay? You also have F for floating point. So those are the ones that uh, we've covered. So that's how I'm going to want you to, to do this. So for example, in your program, I want you to do a heading, which will be before your for loop, and then continue with the for loop. So anyway, I uh, want things lined up, uh, and it's fine that they're going to be right justified. So that's all fine. The third item is using a system timer. You saw the example, and the example is, is also down below, system current time milliseconds. And finally, how to sort using the bubble sort. So those are the items that we are covering today in class. So let's get started. Get on the right file. There we go. First is reading a text file. Generally speaking, you have to, and this is for reading or writing, you have to open it. You will then either do your read or write, depending on what you're doing, either reading it in or writing it out, and then you must close it. Closing is important. If you don't close it, you will lose the information in the buffer. Okay? That is especially, especially important when you are writing a file out. All right. So to get that to work, we have to import the java.io. All right. Now, if you notice, I have import java.io.asterisk. That's going to just bring in everything. It was easier than me saying you have to have import java.io.file, import java.io.file not found exception. Okay, um, we just do that. We're just going to bring it all in. Okay, you put that up with your uh, java.util.scanner where you're bringing it in. And if you have forgotten, if you have forgotten, if you start writing, when you start to write this program, I don't, I don't know what I need. Okay, control shift O will automatically import it in to um, not Canvas, almost said Canvas, into Eclipse for you. So any imports that you need, it will actually bring them in separately. The other thing when reading a text file, when reading a text file, this doesn't apply to writing, but if you're going to do both, you have to have this in. There could be an exception. And Java is going to yell at you if you haven't taken care of this exception, okay? And that is, what if the file doesn't exist? If the file doesn't exist, you, you get an error, okay? Um, so to handle that, and it won't even let you actually do it without this, um, at least this particular way, you have to tell it that, hey, I understand I could throw a file not found exception. So don't flag me for it. It could happen. And you do that by putting in throws file not found exception. You do that by putting it in your public static void main section. So you can see that at the bottom of the screen down there. Simply throws file not found exception goes between the parenthesis, closing parentheses, and 
the first or the opening curly brace. Right? That's how you create this file, okay? Or before we even start. So here's how we have to do this, okay? Again, I, this is just a review. You have to put it in there. Don't forget it. It won't let you. It will yell at you. All right. So now, once we've taken care of all that, we're ready to actually open the file. Before we do that, we actually have to create this file. So we're going to create a new file. Now, here you hopefully you can see I'm pointing at the file then FIN. That could be anything. That is a name. You name this thing. Okay. It's a new file. And that's where you give it the name. Now, the, the text file that I sent you was called test.txt. That's what I will be using to check your programs. Okay. So it needs to open test.txt. That's simply creating this file object. Once we have that, you need to actually create a scanner because a scanner simply reads input, okay? Normally, we're reading the keyboard input, okay? In this case, our input, our scanner is going to read the text file. So if you look at that line, it says scanner, file in. You could call it George, okay? Scanner George. Okay, so if you called your keyboard scanner Sam and your file scanner George, you could actually have them both open and working in conjunction with each other. Um, so, you know, that, that's just a file name. I called it file in just because. Okay, so you create this scanner of type file in. So that's going to allow it to actually open the file. All right. Then you're going to read this file. Now, see here, I say variable equals file in, that's your scanner, dot next line. The reason we're using next line is because we're reading a text file, T-E-X-T -E file. That means it's characters. So that's something that Notepad will open. Okay. So it's a string. That variable is going to be a string variable. It will not be a number, even though that file that I sent you has all numbers in it. They're going to come in as a separate line. Each one of those is on a separate line and they're a string variable. So that variable, whatever you call it, must be a string variable. Once you've read everything in, bingo, you're ready to close the file. Don't forget to close the file. If you do, it will not like it. You will have this file sitting open. Not a good thing. It's kind of like letting your front door open on a day like today. Not a good thing. Any questions on that? All right. Wow, this, this is going to be a really quick class, I think. All right. Uh, what what happens if you just for hypothetically speaking forget to close it? What would happen? Um, you will not get all of your text. You will not get all of your data. So for example, it, it, this is really prevalent when you're writing. If you're writing a whole list of data, you're going to lose could be quite a bit because it all goes into your buffer. 
that that scanner creates creates a buffer. Okay. And if you don't close it, let's say, and, and this is just some, I'm just making up numbers here. Okay. Let's say you have a hundred numbers, because that's what I sent you. Okay. If let's say 75 numbers will fit into a buffer, and I tried to write this file out and I didn't close it, it would only, well, you know what, let's do it this way. Uh, it writes 25, it'll take 25 numbers and write it out, or 30 numbers, it's better, 30 numbers. So it fills it up with 30, it writes the first 30, takes the next 30, writes it out, next 30, writes it out. You go on, even though you, are, you told it to write, if you don't close that file, those last 10 are never written out to the whatever, whether it's a hard drive or flash drive or whatever. Those last 10 are never written. So instead of having 100, you have 90. And that creates a problem because you lose data. Now, we're talking a single number here. What if you're talking a number of people's, uh, if, if we're collecting information and we're writing information out, you know, for example, let's say we're writing your information to the registrar's office. Okay. If you go to write that out, you might lose half your classes. That wouldn't be good. You would not be happy. Okay. Or, you know, if you're working for sheets and you know, you are now collecting information from, from a user. Okay. So you get their name and address and birth date, blah, 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 blah. And you have this stuff written out. If you don't get all the information, it, it's a bad thing. Your, your file is in essence corrupt. So when you go to read it back in, it's not going to read everything back in. So if you don't close it, you're going to lose data. Did that answer your question? Yeah, I was just, yeah, that, that did. I was just asking just in case, like, you know, somehow uh, I would forget what, what, what I would be looking for. Uh, your, your, your data will not be complete. So, for example, if, if, in our next, if in our next project, okay, we are writing something out, okay, um, let's say, uh, like the flashcard program. If you went to write out the flashcard program, so you know you you bring in the questions, and you have this whole list. So you just typed a hundred questions or whatever, and you save it. Okay, I'm done. You go away. You come back in. You go to load it. Now you know you saved a hundred questions. You might only have seventy. So when I say you lose it. It was there, but you walked away, you closed the program, they're now gone because it's not in memory. It's you're relying on that hard drive. So when you go to load it, you're only going to get like part of it back. So that's how you're going to tell. Thank you. Okay. All right. Let's take a look at a sample read and kind of go through the process. Okay, because you know, I have the text here, but in note format. Let's look at it in code format. Okay, so first thing you need to do is create this file. Okay, so you're going to create text.txt. That's actually the file I gave you. Speaking of which, when you go to run this program, you're going to have to put that file in where it needs to go or it's not going to find it you can't just oh okay i downloaded it fine you're going to have to put it and and if you guys installed this in one the way we did in 121 you should have a folder called lesson or lessons or something like that it's going to go into that um otherwise you're going to have to look to see where your programs are located. And everyone has uploaded a program to me, so that should be easy. Wherever that is, you're probably looking 
at the directory right above that one. So that's probably, uh, it's going to be like under lessons or I'm not exactly sure because I don't know where everybody did. It depends if you followed the, the defaults that I gave you or not. If you did, it will go in the folder lessons. But the folder right above where your program is, is listed. That's where you have to put it or you're not going to be able to test your program, which would be kind of bad because this is a 20, it's going to be a 20 point assignment. So it's nice if it will work for you. So anyway, you create the, the file, test.txt. You then create the scanner. Okay, pretty easy. Those are the lines. When you're doing this, it's always a good idea to tell the user what you're doing. Don't leave them in the lurch. Now, granted, 100 numbers, it's going to read that in. You're not even going to see anything. You won't even, if you clear the screen, then print this up, you know, stand by, I am reading in your text file, and it reads in 100 numbers, and then you clear the screen, you're never going to see it, because it's going to go, boom, be done. But it's still a good idea to let the user know. Because if it's a huge file, you know, you could you could stick a print with a period as it's going across the screen if it's, you know, like a, a, just like a little timer thing. But anyway, tell the user what you're doing. Then you're going to have to read in. Now, the way that, and I don't know if any of you looked at the text, I opened it in Notepad. If you did, you will see that first number is the CNT values. I don't expect that you counted them, but I will tell you the first number in there is 100. Following it are 100 randomly generated numbers. So that first number is telling you how many numbers are in the file. How many you have to read? My test data will be different than yours. It will also have a different number to read in. So you can't make that static. Then you need to read the information in. Okay, for i equals one to i less than or equal to cnt. That's going to start at one and read in however many items. In your case, it would read in 100 items. You read it in. Again, it's a text file. You have to read it in to a string variable. It's text. Read it in that way. Problem is, that's not what it is. It's an actual number. So what do we have to do? We have to parse each of those and put those into a numeric array, an integer array. Okay. The sample I gave you sorts integers. They, it sorts them numerically, which is actually how your assignment is to do it. And you know what, I think I forgot to mention sort it numerically. I just say sort. We're gonna do it numerically. Uh, if you wanted it to sort it in reverse, you would change that uh, greater than sign to less than, but we'll look at that when we in class. Okay. And what have I forgotten to do here? The last thing, close the file. Close the file. That right there is how you're going to read your text file. Any questions on that? Okay. Your assignment, there it is. We're going to be out of here in 20 minutes. Your assignment is to write a program that will do the following. One, it will read a text file of numbers. The file name will be test.txt. The first item you read 
will be the number of lines to read. So if you look down at the bottom down here, I have CNT. So the file, and if you look at that in, in Notepad, you'll see the first number is 100. Then it starts with a number, a number, a number, all the way down to 100 numbers, to 100 numbers. That's what's in that text file. Okay. So you will read a text file. The first item will tell you how many you have to read. That's going to be your CNT value. Yours, it will read in, will be 100. Mine will be different. I'm telling you that now. Mine will be different. Second thing it will do, it will display the first 120 values of the unsorted list. If you look at the example that I gave you in class on Monday, it was, I, we printed out the first 100. I'm asking you to print out the first 120. Now, what if my text file only had 80? You're still going to print those out, but those values are going to be zero because when the program is initialized, your numeric val values are all set uh, to zeros. Okay? So that's okay. If I have a thousand numbers that I want sorted, you're only going to show me the first 120 because I don't want to have to scroll through the screen. I couldn't see them all. So it will display that. So it's going to read read the text file. So what should this program do? It it you should have a title and credit always title and credit. So clear the screen. Title credit. Boom. Uh, reading text file. Clear the screen. Uh, if you want to have it like like the example and say you know press enter to see the unsorted list, that's fine. Hit that. Clear the screen. Display. 120. At that point, the program will sort the list. Here's where that system timer is going to come in, just like the example I gave you. Okay. Please don't make this mistake because I will take points if you do. Okay. If you start the start timer before you start sorting, so while you're still saying something, so your program comes up, you know, it says, uh, you know, reading the numbers, press enter to see the unsorted list. I hit enter. It shows them to me. If you start your timer right at that point and then go on to say, press enter to begin the sort, if you start sorting or start timing before then, and I happen to sit there, guess what? Your timing's going to be off. I know how long this should take to sort, okay? That's gonna cost you points. So make sure right before, and remember we're doing, we're doing the bubble sort, the traditional bubble sort, um, which, and, and you saw it actually did a pretty good job. I mean, I can't sort 100,000 items in 20 to 30 seconds. I can't do it. Okay, but the computer did. And this is the worst sort you're going to see. Okay, and it still did a good job. But anyway, um, it will then begin to sort. So it's nested for next loop. So you set your timer right at the beginning of that first, first sort, first number, or first uh, four statement. It will then sort. Okay, you should. Tell the user, please stand by sorting your or sorting your numbers. Again, tell the user what you're doing. Then you can have, you know, I have sorted however many CNT numbers, and it has taken me this long to do it. You will tell me in seconds how long it took. Okay. So if you, you know, that that's exactly the same as, you know, in the sample program, uh, you know, it's going to say, you know, 5.321 seconds. Uh, that would be, you know, that's what I'm looking for. Press 
enter to see the sorted list. I hit enter. It's going to show me the first 120 sorted numbers. And that being said, you're going to set your array to a maximum of 100,000 numbers. Don't forget to have a heading. So what am I what do I mean when I say a heading? I want column one, column two, column three, column four, uh, column five, column six. You're going to have six columns because you're showing me the first 120. We're going to do 20 numbers per column. So have a heading. The heading could be 1 to 20, 21 to 40, and so on. Okay. So don't forget the heading. Don't forget to use a method to clear the screen. Your file structure or my file structure is going to be the same as yours, same as the sample I sent you, CNT and the number. The difference is my CNT is not going to be 100. All right. Okay, let me publish the assignment. Okay, that is your assignment. And it's a 20 point assignment. I don't think there should be a problem, but not positive on that. If there is, text me or call me. Uh, email also works. And if you're getting an error with your program, you can text me, but then email me your program so I can take a look at it. Uh, it's a lot easier than taking a look at, at here. Here's a picture of my screen. That sometimes works. Um, if I can actually see your code, that's usually a little better because I can look at the whole thing. If your program fits on your screen, all you have to do is take a picture of it. Any questions, comments, criticisms, and or complaints? I have a question. Sure. Can you go back to like the two sides of the example code? That one? Yeah, I just wasn't able to see them correctly. The Zoom was being really glitchy for me. Okay. Well, I've actually um, recorded this. That's what I, at the beginning, that's kind of what I stopped for. And I'll probably um, go ahead and, and post this. Uh, so you guys, if you needed to look at it again, you could. But it takes a while because it's got to convert the file. Any other questions? All right. This is actually um, your lab. So what can I tell you? It's, you, it's machine work. So you're going to work on that. If you have something better to do this afternoon, that's fine. It's due midnight tonight, so you can use your lab time to work on it. Uh, and I said, when I'm done here, I'm, I've got to go move some snow and that, or ice, depending. Um, but I'm, I will be, I will probably be back and, and be able to get on Zoom here probably, you know, close to three o'clock anyway, maybe 3.30 if, if needed. Depends, depends how much ice I have to move. Anything else? So you said we don't have to uh, join the Zoom for the lab? No, there's not. I'm not actually not even going to have Zoom unless somebody has a question. And then I will actually start up Zoom. You, no. In essence, lab is canceled. Your lab is write this program. If you have a question, text me, call me, email me. Um, hey, Doc, did you say you're going to be back on Zoom at a point for questions? If you have if you have a question, yeah, or I could stay on now. 
I was just curious, uh, like when we, or when I started the assignment, if I needed, I didn't know if you were having a Zoom session. Are, are you going to be doing it during lab? Is that what you're going to work uh, on? I might work on it a little sooner, but or lab, yes. Because what I'll do is um, I will probably come back in. I'll try to make it a point to get back in here by like 3.30. That would that would work, actually. Yeah, I, okay. I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't mind. All right. that. You know, uh, and that's for, for any of you. I'll I'll get back on. We'll say, you know, let me set my alarm um, and we'll shoot for. Uh, 3.30, if you have any questions, 3.30, 3.45 in that ballpark. Is it going to be the same link? What do you mean? The same like uh, Zoom oh, yeah. link? Yeah, yeah. This, that link I sent you is actually, you know, from, from the homepage on Canvas. This All right. is always my, my link. All right, yeah, perfect. All right. Anything else? That's all I have, folks. You are free to begin working on that. And uh, if you need to come back in, I will shoot to be back on here by 3.30, and we'll go from there. Thanks, Doc. All right. Take care. See you guys soon. Don't miss us too much. <laughs> That's going to be hard not to do. <laughs>